Think about this cut. What if you could take ideas from a shag and a butterfly cut and put them together? Do I have you intrigued? I hope so because that is going to be today's haircut tutorial. Let's go. Who doesn't like the movement and fun mess of a shag, but what about those clients who maybe want to keep some extra length or not have as many layers? Or maybe as a stylist, you need to tweak how you cut the layers to suit your client's hair type best. I love the flow of a butterfly cut, but in salon, I found some clients still needing it tweaked if their hair is finer or thin in the front sections. Today's cut, I'm going to be taking inspiration from both those cuts, but modifying it to help with all those concerns of fine hair or wanting less layers and so forth. I'm so excited. I hope you are. Let's get started. So we're just gonna jump right in to sectioning. We're gonna do more of a classic traditional sectioning going, separating the back from the front. I'm gonna push that forward and clip the back out of the way. I'm leaving out the sides because we're going to be cutting into that fairly quickly. Okay, so now that the back is separated from the front, really one of the big differences in how I'm doing this cut versus the shag, like the butterfly, I'm gonna be bringing everything forward to cut and I'm gonna be holding it at a vertical where with a shag, I held it at a horizontal. So those are gonna be the differences between the shag and this cut, but also the similarities of a butterfly cut. So we're still gonna have a nice face frame with lots of swooping and movement around the face, but the way that I'm gonna change the angle of how I create the layers is gonna be different from a butterfly because we wanna keep a little bit more length down here and a little bit more weight throughout the hair. So still some movement, but a little softer. So I'm gonna comb everything forward and we're gonna take our first center part here to create our guide. And this is based off of a middle part. And this is all at your own discretion, whether you're a client attempting this at home or getting it done at the salon. To cut your guide is gonna be based off of how short you or the client is wanting to cut their face frame. I'm gonna do this a little bit on the more medium side, so right below her nose here but enough that we can create a swoop and I might go back in after I've cut and refine it a little bit more and take more length off. So I wanna cut her length to be right just below the nose. So to create my guide, I'm gonna take my first section here and same with the butterfly. I'm gonna come up with it. So we're holding it out slightly at an angle we're not pulling it straight out. I wanna create a little bit of elevation because I'm wanting to maintain a little bit more length and thickness. But find our guide first, essentially. Can even take even less hair actually for this part. I'm gonna pull that down and I'm just gonna point cut it to create my guide here. So we've got our first guide here is set and this is going to be the basis for creating our layers on both sides of the head. So now that that has happened, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to take my next section along her head here and we're going to be bringing it up and twisting our hands. So you're wanting to create an angle with your fingers and when you're cutting, you want your scissors to be at an angle as well. Come out and lift, twist up, cut. So that just creates a nice shape there and as it comes down, it'll flow as we're moving from our sides. We're gonna take our next section and as we take each section, we're kind of moving up the head with it to create the flow better so you still get layers coming through but you're also leaving more length as you go throughout the head. So we're gonna take our next section here. We're gonna come straight up. We're rounding out with the head. Up, twist, find your last guide. Scissors at an angle, pointing up towards the ceiling, cut. 
next section. Cut. We're gonna do that all the way back to our last section here in the front of our head, the front sections. And that has created our first guide. And now we're just gonna move into the sides. Okay, so we've got our guide established here. So the difference with how I am doing the side layers on this versus a butterfly. With a butterfly, I came in at a diagonal with my side sections and was bringing them straight forward in the same fashion as I cut this top. With this cut to add a little bit more length and keep a little bit more thickness, I'm gonna just be coming and taking partings straight down the head, all the way down the sides and everything is coming up and over to the center part so that way we're maintaining the most length throughout her sides here and a little bit more thickness for those clients who maybe are too nervous of taking out too much length here with the layers or maybe they don't want as many layers. So we're coming back to our center guide every time and I will cut the section in half just because it makes it easier to see everything. Fine side of my comb. and you're just gonna be following your guide. So I can see my guide there. And I'm gonna move on to my next section. And as we're moving back in the head, we're gonna be changing our angle of how we're holding because we are moving with the head. Not everything is coming straight forward. Up and twist, follow that guide, cut. Okay. And you wanna make sure you're taking small enough sections to be able to see through. That way you're not taking off too much hair or getting an uneven cut for each section. You wanna be able to see them very easily. So now that we're at this back part of the head, I'm coming straight up and twisting up and I will cut scissors up to the ceiling. We're taking our next section here straight across the head. So we have all this hair is left out and then all this is gonna be coming straight up and back to the center part. If you want to, as you're moving up and grabbing more hair, you can go ahead and clip it out of the way. If you want to keep it neater, um, you certainly don't have to, but feel free. It's not going to do anything but help keep your sections nice and neat. And as you move down the head here, the further you get to the bottom part of your side sections, you're gonna have less hair to cut. So typically in the front, you will still have some hair that you're gonna be cutting off, but as you move into the back side of the head, not as much is gonna be coming up just because we're bringing everything up and you're keeping that length and weight down here. See here, we barely have any hair to cut here, just a little bit of baby hair. And there we have nothing. So this very last side section here probably won't have anything even that comes all the way up. Yeah, there's nothing there to cut. So in the back, like I said, as you move further down the hair here and you're combing everything 
back over to the center. The further down the hair you go, the less hair you're gonna have to remove, but I am gonna check that around her face just to make sure I didn't miss anything. A little bit here along her face. Like I said, that you will cut into just because it's right at the hairline. So that creates some nice face shape and face framing here along her hair. We've still got our length intact and now I'm gonna repeat on the other side and then we'll get into the back. Okay, so we're gonna now move into this next side. We've got all her length here. We're gonna be taking the same parting, so coming straight across the head, bring all the hair forward, leave this out. If you even wanna be extra neat, you can clip this down if you want to but it's okay to leave it out of the way. And I'm gonna take my first section for the front, coming back to the center. Always come back to the center when doing this cut the way that I'm doing it here if you're wanting to maintain um, keeping the length and thickness. So we're gonna come up. I'm gonna grab, apparently I don't have, hmm, have a little baby guide there. That was from the original, uh, original guide. So coming back further on the head, as we move with the head, we're changing and moving up with it. We're not bringing it forward. Bring it up, point up to the ceiling, angle the shears and cut. I'm just gonna push that over to the side. Next section. can see my guide here. Okay. We're just gonna continue taking sections, moving our way down. Remember, the further down you get onto the hair, the less hair that's gonna be being removed. Around the face, you're still always gonna have some pieces that get cut, but as you move further down along the backside, you won't have as much length removed. Always come back to that center angle, find your guide and cut. So like I said, with a butterfly, I was taking diagonal back sections and I was bringing everything forward like this and twisting. So you maintain more length with a butterfly haircut than you would a shag. Um, but this way I feel like just gives you a little extra length and thickness along that base for clients who maybe are really fine and thin and they wanna see some movement, but maybe they don't wanna do as many layers everywhere. So bringing everything up towards the center here allows you to have a little bit more control of that. Nothing there, and then very last section back here. Okay, gonna let that fall. And now we will move into the back. So yeah, so some nice face framing happening, but we've got our length here. So I'm gonna re-spritz her down in the back just to keep it nice and damp. And I'm gonna actually cut her back layers similar to um, a haircut I did last week is layers for fine thin hair. So I'm gonna be doing it in that same fashion. So you'll get a flow somewhat like a shag, but you're really kind of more so skimming just the outer layer of the cut so you get movement but you're not losing the weight 
and thickness that we have in the interior of the hair. So to start off though, I'm gonna come in and do a back center part here to create a guide. Push that hair forward. And we're gonna start at our very top and we're just gonna pick up sort of where we left off with our last layer for the back, for the front, the back front of the top. And we're gonna come up and I'm just gonna keep angling and twisting my fingers up, pointing to the ceiling and cutting into that to keep it blending. So as you move down the head here, you have a nice flow. So again, when you're cutting your first section of the back, you're gonna come straight up, find your guide from that top section. You're gonna twist up, find your guide and cut it. Keep going down with the head. So with my other layering tutorial, I came straight out um, to cut it, but similar fashion where I'm really twisting to just sort of skim that outer layer and cut from the longest piece of my next guide into your guide in the front. Come out, twist, twist, twist. I see my guide in here. I'm just gonna blend that in. And as you get closer to the bottom part of the hair, I'm not gonna continue to curve down and come out with it. If I continue to curve down and cut into this, we're really gonna compromise the weight and thickness that they have here. So once I get about to where the curve is on the head, the occipital bone, I'll just come straight out at a 90 twist and cut in to meet that up. Same idea as the tutorial I did last week, just a little bit different in how you apply it. I'm gonna move into my next guide and I'm gonna over direct the hair back towards this center part again. So moving back towards the center part is kind of a theme with how I'm doing this cut. Everything in the front and the sides came to this middle center part and then in the back, everything is coming back to the center part. And then with this, as you move around the head and you're pulling back to the center, you're gonna have, just like you did in the front, less hair to cut as you go. Come up, find that guide. Okay, so we've got our next section. And again, everything comes back to the center. So really over direct it over to that center. On this very top, we're coming all the way up, twist. I've got just a little bit of hair here. Barely. Remember, I'm not angling my hands down with it. I'm just at the occipital bone coming straight out and over at that point and twisting right before I cut to preserve the weight and thickness. I'm just gonna barely, barely come into my side. So just kind of at the tip of the ear. And to make sure that blends, I'm gonna do the same thing, pulling it back up twist, twist, twist. We don't have any hair to cut there, but I wanna do that just to make sure, but that is gonna blend in really nice. And now I'm just gonna repeat on this other side here and we will get her dry and do dry cutting because that's always my favorite. And I'm gonna re-spray down her hair here just because we want it Nice and damp for more control, and I'm using that fine side of my comb when cutting my layers. Okay. 
Again, remember once you hit the occipital bone area, just come straight out and twist. Don't go cutting down into the bottom part of their base in the back. So now we're going to get her dry. Okay, so we've got all the layers put in everywhere. We've got movement going on through here, but we're still maintaining the length and more thickness along the ends of the hair. And then we have enough of a bang going here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it. I'm going to try to do a little bit more of a smooth blow dry not as much bend on the ends as I typically do. And then we're gonna go in and do our dry cutting, which is always my favorite part. I'm using two smoothing style products for her blow dry that I will link below. I'm using Keratin's High Gloss Mist in Olaplex 6, and I'm gonna spread this all through the hair. I'm also using Tymo's brand new dryer, their Air Hype. I've been using this dryer in my recent videos, and I love it. I will link it below as well. And I'm using Cricut's 400 brush on her lower half of her head and 390 on the top front pieces to create her shape. All right, so we have got her dried and styled. I'm happy with how she came out. So what I'm just gonna do now is we're gonna check the front to make sure it's all lining up. So to do that, what I like to do for this type of cut is I would just comb everything towards the face, trying to curve it under to really see that face framing. And I feel like she's a little bit longer in this area compared to this side. This is why we check. So I feel like she's just barely longer and off. Kind of right in here is bothering me. I'm gonna come on this other side. I'm just gonna comb towards me back to that center. And this is it right in here. So almost like you were doing a traditional face framing and just point cut into the hair that needs to be cut. And I'm just gonna pull everything forward down the rest of the head and do that where it might need it, but she's actually flowing nicely everywhere else. Just barely point cut into that little base there. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna come in, I barely, just barely a little bit right in here. Not as much on this side, that other side is what was more noticeable to me. And then again, I'm just barely skimming along this very bottom piece. Oh, she came out so, so good. For the back, she actually looks nice. I don't really think I have much that I want to do. Um, but if you wanted to go in and check, you would kind of just simply skim through it. I'll take bigger sections to see where I need to maybe nip anything. A lot of times I like to just lightly point cut into it. That's all personal preference. Again, when you're taking your sections, come back to the center, try to keep the back separated from the front and just nip at it where you might need to. You can do some nice deep point cutting, like I said, if your client wants it softened up, but she's looking good. Got a lot of movement, but we maintained thickness all throughout the hair. There's no like super wispiness like it is with a traditional shag. If you wanted to go in and texturize it or add some razoring, you simply could if you wanted to add a little bit more movement. Um, but, but for this haircut, the goal in mind was sort of to create some movement and shape, but keep the weight and not do as many layers. I am, I think, gonna just lightly point cut in around her face. I feel like it's a little bulky. So I'm just literally gonna Take it, bring it towards me, and just lightly point cut into that. Nothing wild. And then you can style this similar ways that you would a shag, either with a little bit of curling. Uh, texture paste is great as well. Or you can keep it nice and sleek how I've done her here. Like I said, I did two brush sizes to create the shape. But yeah, I'm loving it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of texture paste in her hair 
and then we will get finished. All right, here we have our finished look. We've got a nice face frame, really giving some movement along the face, but we maintain the length and thickness throughout the ends by over directing everything towards the center of the head, the layers flowing throughout the sides to keep that movement going all through the hair and the back blending in great. Again, this is a modified cut with inspiration from a shag and butterfly cut designed to be a way for those with finer thin hair types or those looking for a little less layers to get a similar look. A shag has much more texture everywhere with less length left around the face and a butterfly cut being a little more flowy than a shag is, but still removing length around the face more than what we did today. I really love all three cuts. It all just comes down to what you are wanting for your own hair. Remember, over direct everything to center both top and back to maintain the length and thickness twist those fingers to the ceiling, make sure to see your guide and you will be left with a great haircut. I will link the other videos mentioned in the description, the butterfly and both my shag cuts. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, please like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time.